Hello, how you doing? Have you heard the term agentic rag, but you're not quite sure you know exactly what this is? Well, if so, then watch along with me for the next few minutes and I'll quickly get you up to speed. Okay, let's get started. So agentic rag is an emerging design pattern that combines retrieval augmented generation, or rag for short, with agent-based reasoning and decision-making. It refers to LLM-driven systems where the rag retrieval component and the response generation component are orchestrated by an agentic workflow that can reason and take multiple steps to accomplish a task. I know many of you are already familiar with RAG, but let me quickly summarize it to get us all aligned. Retrieval augmented generation, or RAG for short, combines a large language model with an external data source, typically a vector database, enabling the RAG-driven system to retrieve relevant information in real time to generate more accurate, context-specific responses. First, the user sends a user prompt to the RAG system. The retriever takes the prompt and uses it to perform a similarity search on a vector database. Semantically similar documents are returned from the vector database and then paired back up and included as part of the context with the original user prompt and sent to the LLM. The LLM uses both of these to generate a final response. In a RAG system, there are two things I want you to notice. The first is that the RAG system initiates a similarity search and gets back the results before the call to the LLM. The second important point to notice in this workflow is that the LLM gets one shot to generate a response. I wanted to call out both of these aspects of the traditional RAG workflow as these change in the agentic RAG pattern. Okay, so I'll get a little more into this later in the video, but for now, let's keep going. It needs to be pointed out that traditional RAG by itself is an important, widely used design pattern. And with the emergence of agentic RAG, there might likely still be use cases for this pattern in future systems. So now, similar to RAG, many of you are already familiar with agentic workflows. But again, let me quickly summarize how a typical agentic workflow works to make sure everyone is on the same page. Quick note, sometimes you'll see the word react to further describe an agentic workflow. React comes from the words reason and action and really captures the essence of what agentic workflows do as they execute. You will see me use the React term in the context of agentic workflows, so I just wanted to provide optics to you on this as well. So getting to this diagram, you can see a typical React agentic system. So let's step through a typical user workflow. A user sends a prompt to the React agentic workflow. The LLM receives the prompt and reasons on potential responses. And if it can, it generates a final response to the user. But if the LLM determines it doesn't have the necessary information, it checks to see if there are any tools available within the React agentic system that can help it get the right data. When this occurs, the LLM directs the integrated system to invoke the tool. Quick note, in this simple example, I have one tool shown, but there could be many more than one tool integrated into an agentic system. And typically, this is the case. Once the tool gets back its results, the agentic system passes the results back to the LLM. The LLM then reasons through the results. And if the LM still needs more information, it can direct the React agentic system to call the same tool again, or it can direct the agentic system to call another tool that's available in the system. Otherwise, if the LM can determine the final answer with the results from this first tool call, it generates the final response, which is then returned to the user. When invoked, the React agentic system alternates between reasoning and action. Similar to the RAG pattern, the React Agentic Workflow that leverages tools is another design pattern that has received a lot of traction in the community. And there are lots of use cases that can be solved using either traditional RAG or this React Agentic pattern, respectively. Quick note, I recently created a video comparing and contrasting both RAG versus React design patterns. Feel free to check this out if you're interested. Now, after creating this video, 
an astute viewer shared the idea of use cases being out there that could be implemented more effectively by marrying RAG and the React agentic pattern. And as it turns out, this marriage of RAG and agentic workflows is another emerging design pattern available for AI system builders. Okay, so now let's see how this emerging agentic RAG pattern works. In this diagram, I have a simple agentic workflow with two tools that each can perform similarity searches on two different vector databases. Remember, in traditional RAG, the vector database is queried before the prompt is sent to the LLM. Here, in agentic RAG, the first thing you'll notice in this workflow is that the vector database is not queried before the prompt hits the LM, but instead after the LM receives the prompt. In this simple example of an agentic RAG workflow, the user sends a prompt to the system. The LM receives a prompt and reasons about the best approach to answer the question. If the LM has enough information, it can generate the final response to the user. Alternatively, if the LM decides it needs more information, and that by having the agentic system invoke one of its tools that it can get the right information, it will do so. In this agentic RAG design, the LM could hypothetically instruct the agentic system to call the first tool, which would execute a similarity search on the first vector database. Then after reasoning through the first round of results, the LM could then determine that it needs an agentic system to call the second tool, which would then result in a second similarity search on the second vector database. So here, you're seeing the benefits of agentic RAG. Remember a few minutes ago, I called out that in traditional RAG, the LM gets one shot to generate a response. Well, in agentic RAG, the system doesn't have to settle for the first set of results from a vector database. The LM can assess intermediate results, detect missing information, requery the vector database, or query a second vector database as it refines its understanding over multiple steps. Once the LM has all the information it needs, it can generate a response for the user grounded in the latest accurate information. At this point, the LM can provide a final response to the user. So how is agentic RAG better than traditional RAG? Well, the first reason is agentic RAG transforms the vector database retrieval from a one-shot step into an interactive, potentially multi-step process. The second reason agentic RAG is better than traditional RAG is because it leverages the LM's ability to reason in a step-by-step -step manner and adapts its vector database retrieval strategy dynamically. Okay, so I'm interested to hear from you on this topic. Do you see use cases in your work or personal projects that can effectively be solved with Agentic RAG? Let me know what you think of Agentic RAG in the comments below. Okay, thanks for watching. This video along with all the other videos in this playlist are listed in the YouTube description. I invite you to watch other videos on my channel. If you like the way I'm sharing this content, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe, this really helps my channel grow. One last thing, we all love technology and we're all excited about all the innovation with the cloud and machine learning and AI. But don't forget to carve out some time to live in the real world. Go outside, go swimming, go hiking, go walking, go climbing, go surfing. Get out and move your body. And if you do, let me know in the comments. I wanna hear about it. And with that, have a great day.